have seen hospitality workers rising up this week, fighting for more livable wages. Protesters out in force as a June 30th contract expiration date looms. Joining us to talk more about this is California Congresswoman Sydney Kamlager Dove. Thank you so much, Congresswoman, for being with us tonight. We want to start by getting your take on this fight over affordability in Los Angeles. I mean, obviously, last night we saw just that huge showing from hotel workers who basically their basic point is we cannot afford to work in, live in the city that we work. So is there anything Congress can do to make it easier to afford to live in L.A.? I think last year's Congress uh, did quite a bit. At the end of the day, it is about the economy and making sure that folks can afford to live in the cities that they love. Uh, last year, you know, with uh, the support from President Joe Biden, uh, we capped insulin charges, uh, insulin costs at $35 uh, for seniors. We uh, as passed the CHIPS Act to allow us to manufacture semiconductors, which is a really big thing, and that means more jobs. Uh, we've worked to save uh, veterans uh, benefits and also to save the ACA, which continues to be under attack in Medicare and Medicaid. And we also passed funding to allow us to replace lead pipes so that folks don't have to drink dirty water. All of that equates to jobs. You know, under Joe Biden, we've created 13 million jobs and we have record unemployment. So those are good things. Um, it still might mean that folks are feeling the crush of, of higher wages and what, it, I mean, higher costs uh, to live. And we are hoping to push more of these kinds of things through this Congress, uh, rather than having to fight about censoring Adam Schiff or getting George Santos out of Congress. Um, I hope that we can uh, pass something like a federal universal basic income because working families just need a little extra, a few extra dollars to help them, you know, get through the month. We have to make sure that we are putting families first in all of our discussions in Congress. Do you uh, support those workers? Would you be out there on the line with them and would you potentially get arrested with them? I would if I could. Unfortunately, I'm not in Los Angeles right now, but I do stand behind Unite here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, l let's talk about another big breaking story tonight. Um, y y one of the committees you serve on is looking at foreign affairs. Um, in Russia right now, there is a crisis situation uh, where um, a opposition leader to Vladimir Putin is essentially saying that he's got support, 25,000 troops behind him, and, and reports of a coup attempt you have a lot better intelligence on this than we do. What do we know about what's happening in the most simple terms for our viewers that may not be Russia experts? And what's your reaction right. to it? Well, there's not much I can say uh, because m much information is classified, but I will say it's scary stuff. Uh, we know that Russia is losing the war in Ukraine. It is not going as Putin has planned. Uh, we know that Russia has been working with the Wagner Group, which is a paramilitary organization of elite mercenaries. They have been fighting alongside Russian forces in the Ukraine. We know that the head of the Wagner Group um, has become critical of Putin and the Russian forces because of the mistakes that are being made and all of these miscalculations that have been made. And as a result of those critical remarks, we know that Putin doesn't like dissent and he has attacked the Wagner Group. I will say that there are many folks in Congress and in the committee uh, uh, that I serve on on foreign affairs that do consider the Wagner Group a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are monitoring this uh, closely. I know by the time I get back to Congress after this recess, we are going to be talking about this. Um, this really does require close attention. So is there anybody to root for in this then? We should be rooting for Ukraine, and we should be rooting for democracy, and we should be rooting for fair information. This is incredibly dysfunctional, what's going on between uh, Putin and uh, the Wagner Group, and, you know, chaos becomes quite dangerous. Would you describe this as an attempted coup? I don't know if I would go that far, um, but I, I do think that this is alarming, uh, and it concerns me because Putin has such a fragile ego of what he could do next. But we do know that they are suffering. They have suffered lots of losses with the Russian forces. 
as I said, we know that the war is not going well for Putin. And so, you know, when uh, cage dogs or rabbit dogs are pushed into a corner, uh, they do bad things. And, and that is how I would define Putin. Okay, uh, well, we're going to switch gears now and talk about something that you're a champion for, and that is women's reproductive rights. This is now a year after the overturning of Roe v. Wade. What would you say is the biggest difference? Well, we know that uh, one in three women have been impacted as a result of the Dobbs decision. Uh, we know that women are now being criminalized uh, for having abortions, for having stillbirths. Uh, we know that a, a woman now can be charged with homicide or murder uh, if they suffer a miscarriage or if they try to have an abortion. Uh, and we know that we only need eight Republicans to sign a discharge petition to allow us to debate uh, abortion care, health care on the floor of Congress. Um, we are seeing doctors who are afraid um, to take care of female patients who come to the emergency room who need, um, who are having complicated pregnancies and might need an abortion in order to stay alive. Um, we are seeing students who are afraid to go to certain schools in certain states because they no longer have access to abortion care. 14 states have already banned abortions and 12 states are in the queue to do so. Uh, these are very dangerous times for women. Sydney Kamlanger Dove, thanks so much for joining us, uh, talking about some really big issues right there. Um, we appreciate your perspective and hope to hear from you again soon.